We'll introduce them. And in fact, on the right, we're in the red sweater. She's in the back of the room. <laughs> hey, hey. You guys may refer to her as Sandra Wilson. I refer to her as Commissioner Wilson. But she's back in the room, and, and I'm glad that she's a member of the elected body. She does a great job for the city. And third term, correct? Yeah, very. Fourth term, see I was incorrect, the fourth term. It's just fantastic uh, uh, leadership that she provides. Uh, next to her is uh, Commissioner Gerald Watkins. Gerald returned back uh, to the uh, Board of Commissioners just after a brief stint in uh, the legislature over in uh, Frankfurt, so he's back with us. And then of course in the center is uh, Mayor Brandy, Brandy Harless in her first term, and she's doing a wonderful job. She's a dynamic leader, and she is one of the reasons why, and Commissioner Wilson as well, why I chose to come to this community. Next to uh, uh, Mayor Harless is uh, Commissioner Brenda McElroy. Uh, Commissioner McElroy is, in her, is her freshman term, if you will. This is her first time as an elected official. She's doing really good. She's full of energy and she really enjoys uh, working with the people, and meeting with the, uh, the residents and learning more from them what their needs are. Really actively engaged her and Commissioner Wilson both on the mayor's walks every Monday night. And then next to uh, Commissioner uh, McElroy is Commissioner Richard Abraham. And he's done his third or fourth term. Well, oh, fifth or sixth term, fantastic. And he does a great job, of course, uh, working with the city, and he has been a constant uh, for the, uh, the city. He actually is really heavily involved with the, the local schools as well, and uh, just does a wonderful job serving our community. So on their behalf, we're here today to talk about the New Day Initiative. But before we get into that, we'll have uh, the team introduce ourselves, tell you a little bit about us, and then we'll move forward. I'll turn it over to Lindsay. Good morning, thank you for having us here today. Uh, my name is Lindsay Parrish. I am the city clerk and director of customer experience. I have lived in uh, the uh, region my entire life and I came to work for the city about six years ago. I actually started um, in the mayor's office, transitioned over to the city clerk's office, um, became the uh, city clerk for Paducah last year and I've just taken on a new title with customer experience director. And um, in the last year and a half, I have seen um, some amazing changes at the city, and I'm really excited for us to share with, them, with you today. All right. Good morning. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces, but for those who don't know me, I'm Michelle Smolin. I'm the assistant city manager. I've been here about three years now, and I'm originally from Kansas City. I attended the University of Kansas to learn about city management, which usually gets me booed out of the room. <laughs> Um, but I'm really Jim's right-hand person in helping oversee the city and working with our Board of Commissioners. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that within the past year, my husband has actually opened up his own business. He has a very entrepreneurial spirit, and so it's been very interesting to me because I'm very drawn towards government, and he has this kind of business side. So I think that that has really helped me understand what it's like to open a small business and will serve me very well um, as I progress in my career and work with the city. Thanks for being here. Hello again, I'm Jim Arndt, the city manager for the city of Paducah. Of course, I've been here for uh, right about 14 months now, 14, 15 months. Uh, they uh, brought me on board last uh, July. It's been a pleasure to be here, getting to know the community, getting to uh, work with an excellent uh, board of commissioners, mayor, and the, uh, the city team. What we, what we refer to as Team Paducah. We're really uh, just really enjoying what we're doing, having fun with what we're doing, going through a lot of change, as we've uh, mentioned before, and you'll see some of the new initiatives we, we just rolled out. Things were changing up at City Hall, things that we believe will have a, tr a tremendous positive impact upon the uh, community. Um, as Michelle mentioned, she is uh, my right arm. We basically work at hand in hand together to, for a lot of things, a lot of different reasons, but she kind of really balances me out a little bit. I'm kind of uh, on the edge and, and moving forward, going fast, and, and uh, Michelle, she uh, this provides that uh, little re uh, reality break for me, a little, little bit of, uh, hey, you know, you, did you consider this? And I always say there's like three ends of the spectrum. You have uh, political, emotional, technical. And uh, Michelle really helps me to understand the emotional side because I really get the technical down pat. I got that. And the political, that's kind of, you know, there you're trying to work on that. But the emotional side, I kind of uh, glance over a little bit. So she helps me to understand what I'm doing and how it impacts people emotionally. So she helps me out. I appreciate that. <laughs> And I told her that'd be the issue when I first met her too. I said, you're going to have to help me. So. All right, moving forward. I'm going to turn it over back to Michelle. She's going to talk. No, before I get there, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Uh, I want to share with you guys our uh, values. 
One of the things the uh, Board of Commissioners wanted us to do was adopt some values, organizational values that really you know, sung true uh, to the city. And we did that, well, I guess, about eight months ago. And we're, what we really are, are focused on is these six core values here, one being solution driven, uh, making sure that what we do, we're really looking for the best solutions. So we're working hard and not to just do the same thing over and over again because we've always done it that way, but actually consider other things outside the box a little bit. What can we do to really make it work? So we're focused on finding those solutions. Two, uh, let's, we'll just go down the list this way, personal accountability, making sure we hold each other accountable uh, for what's going on. Like uh, we basically have what we set aside or set established, if you will, account accountability uh, partnership meetings. We do that through, throughout the leadership team. Everybody has an assigned accountability partner. And basically what you do is you meet with that person individually uh, at a regular uh, time of your choosing. Michelle and I meet at 6.45 every Friday. And we talk about things about, she holds me accountable for things I'm working on. The following Friday, I'll, I hold her accountable about things she's working on. So you really kind of talk, it, it could be anything. It could be uh, family life, it could be uh, professional, long range goals, short term, short term goals. Anything that that person puts on their list, you hold them accountable for that. And it actually expand, expands beyond that, uh, talking about holding each other accountable, accountable for what we're doing at work, what we're not doing at work, that type of thing, just to make sure we're all on track. Every person matters, really focusing on that every person matters in the community, every place, every person in this room, every employee, every person matters and making sure we consider that in the decisions we make on a daily basis. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, action oriented, really just doing things, just making sure that we find the solution and actually get it done. Focus on getting things done, being active, being proactive and actually trying to uh, make a uh, intentional difference on in what we're doing. And fiscal responsibility. We all have big dreams and big plans, but making sure that we're responsible for the money uh, to make sure that we put it in the right spot and we're actually watching those, those budgets tightly, making sure we make good financial decisions for the city because the money the city gets is, is brought in, of course, by taxation. And we, got, we have a, an ultimate responsibility to make sure we spend those monies wisely because we all give to that when we pay our taxes and we kind of don't have that control what it goes to, but at the city level, we have to make sure when we exercise that control, we do it wisely. I'm going to flip back to customer experience. We'll talk about that a lot today. It's really focusing on improving the experience of our customers and realizing that we have customers. But basically, we are a small business. We're a small business that's designed to, to benefit our customers. Our customers are everybody in this room. It's the, uh, the citizens, it's the, the residents, it's the uh, businesses who choose to perform their business in the city. It is the uh, visitors that come and visit our city. It's everybody who chooses to drive by right now. Those are our customers, making sure that we treat them and give them a good customer experience when they interact with the city. And now I'll turn it over to Michelle. She'll talk about the strategic plan. One, one too far. Yeah, all right, well, uh, one of my key roles as the assistant city manager is overseeing our strategic plan. And really what that is, is that's the roadmap. If you want to know what the city is working on, go check out the strategic plan. Um, the way it works is we meet with the commissioners annually. So we had our last retreat in January and we get some alignment around what do you really want to get done? And so you'll have, you'll see, we put these at every table to kind of pass around and look at. Um, and I see we have some of a uh, Innovations Branding House team members here. They helped us with all the beautiful design work on the website. So thank you very much for that. Uh, but we have these books. There are over 60 initiatives. And then what we have are these win initiatives. And so those are the high priority things that we're trying to get done um, immediately that the commission says these are the most important. Please work on these. So really what we'll talk about today are all things that uh, grew out of the strategic plan. And so in the strategic plan, we have action items. And uh, there's a lot that focus on growing small businesses and economic development. And so I just wanted to highlight a few of those. But please, I encourage you, the other thing that we have, I don't have one up here, is um, the R. Paducah cards. And the R. Paducah is our strategic plan. It has the website on the back of it. And you can scroll through all of the action items. There's recreation, community development, economic development, you know, arts industry. So please go check it out. And there's something for everyone. You can also see our monthly updates. It's not a plan that just sits on the shelf. We provide monthly updates about what's happening in all these different areas. So these are different action items. Um, as the city manager mentioned, we'll talk a lot today about creating a customer-centric culture. 
Uh, the other thing is we'll introduce in a little bit is we have a new uh, business development specialist position. And this position is really focused on growing local businesses and helping businesses stay here. We also are focused on recruiting and incentivizing certain type of industries and we have incentives that we're trying to bring these industries into town. We also are working on cultivating local entrepreneurship and innovation. So that's what we're uh, here to do today to talk to you about different ways we can partner with you and help your small business grow. We also are focused on our creative industry. So we have a lot of creatives here, but how can we help them grow their business and turn it into a sustainable model? So everything we'll talk about today grew out of these initiatives. And like I said, it really is our roadmap. So if you wanna see where the city is headed, please go check it out, take a book with you, email me. We're happy to get involved. We need the whole community involved to really make it a success. All right, I'm gonna turn over to Lindsay. We're like the tag team here, she tagged me, I'm in now. So the uh, New Day Initiative, that's kind of the, uh, the core of what we're gonna talk about today is we really had a uh, uh, fun with this. We wanted to make sure that when the, uh, we made these changes that it was noticed. It was noticeable by the community. Did anybody here attend the New Day Initiative when we had the, uh, the launch? This one, two, two, very good. So we really tried to have a lot of fun with that. So you know, kind of going outside the norm, what we really focused on was uh, how do we improve customer experience and then how do we get people to know about it? And this is one of those events where we're sharing with what we did to get people to know about it. But the big th launch was the, uh, when we had the, uh, uh, the, the launch of the new day. And we did that uh, in, in, intentionally. We had uh, balloon figures there at uh, City Hall. We had, uh, I wanted fireworks, I wanted to fly over, <laughs> but I didn't get those. Sometimes you don't, because I remember we talked about it with Lindsay, she actually set it all up, Lindsay and Michelle both. And she said, what's the budget? I said, zero. Remember, fiscal responsibility, <laughs> right? So, so we really, <laughs> really had a good time with it. We had a DJ on the porch at City Hall. I mean, how, how often do you see that, right? We had a DJ out there rocking on at City Hall. We actually brought in miniature golf. Did you guys, at miniature golf at City Hall, on the porch of City Hall, right? So we really wanted to make it, you know, just, hey, this is something, this is something special here. We're doing something different. We had the antique uh, fire truck there. We had the, uh, the Dalmatian there. We had the antique police car there. It was, it was really good. And you guys probably would have been there if we would have had the flyover, and I apologize to you. All right? <laughs> So, but the, it was a really good time. It really, what it was all about was we made some changes back prior to uh, my arrival back in, I think it was 2013, to the way we did our permits, inspection, our permits and inspections. And uh, nobody knew it. Just nobody knew it. And uh, they tried the traditional means of sharing what they did, how they did it, but nobody knew they made changes. So we really wanted to highlight the changes we did. Oh, I forgot. We had Dippin' Dots ice cream, too, and that was pretty cool. Yeah, see, <laughs> see you guys missed out. Yes. But it was really cool, but we really wanted to kind of highlight, this is a new day. We're changing. This, this is the day, and we're moving forward from this day. So we really had a, a good time with that, just making sure we earmarked what we're doing, kind of celebrate what we're doing, and moving forward with it. And just as the second uh, bullet item says there, with an uh, intentional focus, increased focus on the customers. Being customer-centric, being customer outward-looking, that type of thing. And then uh, June 28th was the day that we uh, kicked it all off for the, for the new day of Paducah. We actually had uh, three great speeches, actually two great speeches. Uh, Lindsay gave a heart-wrenching speech, she really did. People had, were actually crying, it was really good. And I, I suggest you go watch the video, it was really good. Uh, she actually had people crying. The mayor gave a tremendous motivational speech and my speech was not so good. So when you go to watch that, just kind of fast forward through me, because I, I didn't like what I did. I got a little preachy. It was, it, was, it was kind of bad. So just fast forward through me, just ignore me, but focus on what Lindsay said and what the mayor <laughs> said, because they really did a good job. And I, I just want to kind of toot their horns for them, if you will. All right. And what you see here, I'm going to turn this over to Lindsay, because I keep getting out of order. <laughs> Thank you. So back in November of last year, the city manager um, asked, uh, myself and our uh, fire chief and our business systems analyst to create a small task force to take a look at what we're doing as far as our permitting process, um, to take a look at how we can make that easier and more customer friendly, easier for our businesses when they're starting a new project, and how just in general we can expand and become more customer centric. So um, we took a look at that over the next uh, few months and we came up with three ways that we really needed to improve. Um, and those were 
communication, consistency, and culture. Those were the areas we wanted to improve our permitting process and how we deal with people when they come into City Hall or when they call us. So um, our, uh, we came together with the city manager's office and we decided, okay, we're gonna work on these specific initiatives that we are going to use to better our permitting processes. We are gonna create a new department called the Customer Experience Department and we're going to hire a business development specialist to help our businesses as well. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes to talk about each one of these things. So we created the uh, Customer Experience Department. Uh, customer experience, as the city manager said, is a value. So we wanted to take that value and create real action with it that the community could see and feel. Um, so people have asked me what, what kind of is customer experience? And it's more than just customer service. Um, it's about every touch point uh, that people have along their journey as they come into City Hall, as they're calling us, emailing us, um, throughout their projects, even if they're just coming in to get a business license, it's about what they're feeling and seeing as they're coming through our doors. Um, so it's uh, when they go to our website, what are they seeing? Are they being able to access what they need efficiently? Um, are they being able to um, get the information they need without having to call several different places? So those are the things that we want to focus on in the customer experience department. A lot of people have said, this is local government. Why does local government need to talk about this? Why do we need to think about this? Um, typically, it's a business uh, uh, strategy uh, to deal with customers and, the, and their experiences when they come into your store or your location. But for us, um, there are two main reasons why we really wanted to focus on this. The first is that um, how people people's everyday interactions with city staff and with City Hall uh, affect how they see our community as a whole. So our interactions with them have multiplied consequences for our entire city, uh, whether those be positive or negative. So we want those to be positive every time. So that when people think about Paducah, uh, even if they're thinking about local government, they're thinking about all of the great things that are here and we represent our city well. The second reason is because focusing on customers has measurable benefits to us. Um, if, making, uh, if we make it easier to get a business license, more people are gonna come in and get a business license. If we make it easier to get a permit, more people are gonna start projects here in our city, which increases our tax revenues. Um, so we created this department and we gave it a mission, um, and that mission is to revolutionize Paducah by placing citizens at the center of every decision. We chose this specifically because it's easy working in local government every day to get wrapped up on um, this, is, this is what works best for us or this is how we've always done this. But we wanted to kind of change that mindset and change the culture in City Hall by starting to think of things and going um, and creating things from the outside in instead of from the inside out. So what are we doing in customer experience? We have started this department. We have four people in it. Um, there are three others and myself. And um, we're doing several things. Uh, we are only a month and a half in now, but we're, we're starting to do several things uh, that we think are gonna benefit the community. First of all, we are tracking data. We're having approximately uh, 400 phone calls come through our department uh, each month, and we have about 40 to 60 people come in each day. So to me that says that is a lot of opportunities to change perceptions of local government and to create interactions where people feel appreciated and feel like they know they can get things done, that they have advocates there at City Hall to help them move their projects along. We're doing follow-up on complaints, questions, and emails, phone calls. Uh, we have what we're calling a resolution log. So if someone calls and we can't have an answer just that very second, um, or if it's something that's gonna take a process to get figured out, uh, we put that on a log and we make sure we're following up on that. Whether that takes a day to get resolved or three weeks to get resolved, we're making sure that people feel heard and that things are not just getting lost. Uh, we are collecting feedback, so we have what we're calling blue cards. Uh, so if you come into City Hall, you will have an opportunity to take a blue card with you, and that's just a chance to say, I dealt with this person today, and this is what my experience was like. And it's been a really great way for us to reward uh, our employees for great customer service, but it's also a way for if someone has a negative experience, we can reach out to that person and see how we can correct that. 
We're helping improve processes and we're helping uh, with permitting solutions, which I'll talk about in a minute. And most importantly, we're making people feel heard and appreciated. So we are located in the foyer of City Hall. So if you come in, we, we will see you coming in. We'll see you going out. So come by and talk to us. Um, I think that this is, uh, it's changing how we see um, the people of our community. You all, are, you all are our customers. Our businesses are our customers. And we want to help you on whatever you're working on. So I'm going to talk just for a minute about um, some of the permitting solutions that we have. The first is our kickstart meetings. And this is, um, we found that permitting is inherently difficult. Uh, it is complicated and it's one of the biggest struggles that cities have um, across the United States. And that's because it covers multiple code sections. There's no one technical expert. You have multiple departments that touch things when people are going in and talking about construction or stormwater or historic districts. It's not, uh, it's not simple. Uh, we have state law that we have to abide by. So we wanted to talk about how can we make that easier? Um, how do we make it where people don't have to call four different places to get one answer? Uh, so we decided to do kickstart meetings and address our communication issues that way. It's best um, if we have an opportunity to talk to you at the very start of a project. So when you're starting a project, we would like uh, for people to come in and meet with us. Uh, we have a team that consists of our planning director, our um, uh, uh, associate planner who deals with zoning and boards, and we have our engineering public works depart uh, department uh, director who helps with stormwater right-of-way permits, and we have our fire prevention division um, there who helps with electrical building, inspections, construction, renovations, those kind of things. So it is an opportunity at the very beginning of your project to bring in your plans or to come in with just questions. You don't have to have anything uh, prepared. You can just uh, come in, ask questions, and start to scope that project. It helps us because we are all in the room and we get to hear what is being said, so it helps our internal communication as well. And we kind of wanted to put just a cherry on this um, because one of the issues we deal with is there's no champion for projects when they come through the city. It's so uh, spread out between different departments that there's no one person who is overseeing the whole process and making sure it gets done. So we wanted to kind of put a cherry on top and um, give you a champion. So if someone is starting a project, we want you to have someone at City Hall who is there anytime you need in order to make sure that questions are tracked down, that you're in contact with the right people, that you get what you need when you need it. So we are having a customer experience representative at each of these meetings, and that's the person that you'd always be able to go to uh, to talk about anything that you need from the time that you are just scoping your project to the time that you complete it and get your certificate of occupancy. The next um, initiative that we are working on right now is the user's guide. Um, we realize that it's a little bit difficult to know everything you need to do when you're going into a new project. Uh, so we are currently creating a step-by-step -step guide that will allow you to see what you need to do and when during the process of uh, going through your project. We are um, hoping this roadmap will be available um, at, by the end of September. Uh, we are first using it as an internal cross-training tool. So if you are um, actually, if someone calls and they are talking to our planning department, that planning staff member also knows, hey, you may need this kind of permit from our fire prevention division as well. And so we know what each other are doing as well. So be looking for that to be coming out in September. And then the final thing that I want to talk about, um, and I'll talk about the first uh, piece of technology that we're implementing, and I'll let Michelle talk about the next, um, is Open Counter. And the best way to describe this is kind of like um, TurboTax for permitting. So uh, it's an opportunity. So let's say you're, you want to start a yoga studio. Uh, you could go on to our website. You could go in and type in yoga studio. It'll bring up a map that is linked to our GIS and our parcel data. So it'll allow you to see where it is zoned appropriately for what you're wanting to build. 
and you can, and, and it'll be in green if it is uh, permitted, uh, in yellow if it is a conditional use, and then in gray if it is not permitted in that area. And then it'll take you through a list of simple click-through questions uh, that allow us to kind of know a little bit more about your project. And then it'll calculate what fees you will need for which permits. It'll give you um, all of the applications that you need, and it'll allow you to start uh, working on setting up a kickstart meeting. So it's an opportunity when you are just starting to think about what kind of project you want to start in the city for you to be able to go in and scope 24 hours a day um, from the comfort of your own home. So we're really excited about this, and we are looking to roll this out before the end of the year. So, and I'll let Michelle talk about the next uh, one that we have. So we have a pretty significant software project being implemented at the city right now, and it's been primarily internal because we've had to build the different backbones, but uh, you'll eventually see some public pieces rolling out like an app where you can actually submit service requests for brush pickup or just ask city question will get routed to the proper department. You'll be able to go online and pay your property taxes and get business licenses. So we're building all of it behind the scenes in preparation for a public rollout. So look for that because as Lindsay mentioned, we're trying to let you access City Hall, you know, 24 seven, anytime. One thing though that is more immediate is our electronic plan review. So you'll actually be able to submit your plans online, uh, send comments back and forth with our different departments and so it should expedite the process and right now when we have paper uh, paper plans they get passed around the departments well this will make it so everyone can actually access it at the same time and hopefully move those through quicker so that's another one we're hoping to roll out before the end of the year we've purchased it we're just doing some training and set up now and we're very anxious to get it out so that we can you know help development move along As you can see, as we go through this, a lot of what we do, it's, it's kind of putting our money where our mouth is at and actually doing what we say we're going to do. Again, looking for solutions, being action oriented, actually doing, finding out the best way to handle it and actually doing things to accomplish the mission. And what I didn't mention that before, our mission is to be the best city in the world. And I know people say it's a lofty mission, you know, how can you even say that, so on and so forth. It's easy. I mean, you can just say it pretty simple, to be the best city in the world. Because I always say, and I say it over and over again, and, and I will continue to say it over and over again, everybody in here, unless you have some special trick that I'm not aware of, and if you do have this special trick, please share it with me after this, after this session, but you only have one life to live in this world, and you choose where to live it. You choose where to invest that life, and only one. You don't get to, to pick the amount of years that you live, but you get to choose where you're going to live that life. And you, since you're, it's, it's, it's evidence, you've chosen to be here. And, and it's up to us to make that life the best as possible. And that's to, be, to create the best city in the world and actually live, work, worship, play in the best city in the world. That being said, she has a lofty task. <laughs> uh, it was mentioned before, we actually uh, looked for solutions to improve how we uh, serve our local businesses. And I remember, I remember, remember it to this day, where I was. You know, things that happen to you, you know, like when like the, you have that nexus point. You can, you can, you know where you're sitting, where you're standing, when something happened to you. You know, I remember the conversation. The phone rang. It was uh, Michelle Smolin. <laughs> she called me. She was on a trip uh, down uh, to the the East Coast, uh, Sp Spartansburg. Yeah. Uh, she says, hey, they have, was it seven? So I remember where I was at. I don't know all the details, but they have, they have multiple different uh, full-time uh, professional economic development employees that work for the city. And I remember my comment back to her was, is, that's embarrassing. For me, you know, the community I left uh, to the north, uh, they, we had two full-time economic development employees. And guess how many we had in Paducah? Zero. That's right. And what do we really want to do is grow our economy, help our businesses grow, help to retain what we have, help people to expand and, and relocate new, right? Uh, we have uh, uh, GPED upstairs and, and we fully support them. But so did this other city, 
And so to my city to the north, they had that uh, larger venue that does economic development, but we invested zero into that. So I told her, I said, we've got to change that. We've got to uh, move forward and actually engage and get in the game. Because if you're not playing in the game, how are you going to hit the ball, right? Do a sports analogy. If you want to go pit a home run, if you're not on the field, how can you hit the home run? You can sit in the stands and watch, but you're not going to hit the home run. So we got a hitter now. We brought on board uh, our first uh, business development specialist, uh, Catherine Byers, and that was basically done to help us, to help us grow uh, your businesses, to help your businesses expand, uh, to help us find out what you need, uh, to help us understand uh, where you want to go, and help us get you there. So with that, I'm going to invite Catherine up. She can kind of tell you a little bit about herself and what she's uh, doing for the city. Now keep, keep the pressure off her, though, because Catherine's only been with us for a, a month now. Three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> Three weeks. Well, I gave you a week. Yes. So I will share a little bit of my background. I am from Paducah and I went to the University of Kentucky, graduated from there and moved home five years ago. So since then I have made several connections through town through the Chambers Paducah Young Professionals and I also serve on two boards for Family Service Society and Paducah Art House Alliance. Um, so that's a little bit of my background and what I've been involved in since then. And now stepping into this role, there's several different layers of what I'll be doing with the city. So um, overall, it's mainly just to encourage business advocacy, retention and expansion within the businesses in Paducah. So that's not just centralized to downtown, it's the city as a whole, which is a little bit different than they've done it in the past. So that's who I'll be speaking with. So it's a liaison between the business owners going and have the, having those meetings with them and figuring out where their um, pitfalls are and how the city can be of help to them. And then also to be that liaison between GPED and see if there's something that they could step in and help with as well. So that's something I'll be working closely with Heather Pierce and Bruce Wilcox over there. Um, I'll also be gathering the data that I get from those business owners to figure out if we need to communicate with the city commission to discuss ordinances that need to be put in place to encourage growth within the community. So that's another element of it, as well as strategizing with um, GPED and the city as a whole. So figuring out what the big issues are, not just specific issues to XYZ business, but figuring out as a whole the things we need to be working on. Um, I'll also be at all of the celebrations in town, so whether that be groundbreakings, ribbon cuttings, um, certificate of occupancy celebrations, things like that, I will be there encouraging such things and celebrating those with the business owners. I will also be, like I said, coordinating on the kickstart meetings. Um, I'll be, I'm housed in the planning department in City Hall, so I will be a part of helping where I can with that. So over at City Hall in the planning department is where you will find me. <laughs> so, hand it back. If you, we'll have time at the end. If you have questions for uh, Catherine, please uh, speak with her and get to know her, exchange cards, that'd be awesome. Do you have your cards with you? Uh, we're still waiting on cards. I need my apologies for that. One thing I want to note too, though, all those changes we talked about, the creation of the uh, customer experience department, the hiring of a uh, de business development specialist, you're thinking, wow, you know, they're really putting a lot of money towards that. Again, one of our values being physically responsible. We didn't do that. We just used what we had. We realigned our resources. So basically we had different people at different places. I thought, well, let's, let's move the pieces that we have, use the, use the resources that we have to better serve our, our customers. And uh, Catherine's position, that was an unfilled uh, IT position. That I talked to our, our IT department and said, hey, you know, you have, you've had this on the books for over a year now, you haven't filled it, can I use that? And through, our, through Team Paducah, we try to help one another. He said, yes, take it. You know, so we're push, uh, putting that foot forward. And then we use some positions in other departments, realign those to create the customer experience department. So again, being physically responsible for what we have, working within the uh, parameters of the existing budget. Grants and incentives. You have in front of you a, a, a form that kind of highlights some grants and incentive uh, packages that we promote and utilize at the city. 
One thing, though, that you might have noticed here that's changed recently is, is we actually celebrate those, promote those, try to get people to understand what we're doing, and, and it kind of shines a light on it, if you will. So you see up there some check presentations that we've done. Really, uh, I stole it from uh, Commissioner Wilson. She gave a speech at the airport, and she said that 2019 is going to be the year of celebrations. And celebrate, celebrate. So that's what we've been doing all year long is celebrating, and we'll continue to celebrate those. Uh, we do the uh, roof stabilization uh, assistance in the downtown area, helping those businesses to uh, maintain the roofs on their structures. Because if we keep the roofs in good shape, it keeps the rest of the structure in good shape, and it prevents what happened with the Kresge building. You guys realize, you guys know the Kresge building? Show of hands. Unfortunately, it's no longer there. The, the roofs collapsed on that building, and it forced us to have to take the building down. It was a beautiful building that's no longer there. It's an asset that's gone now. And now we're dealing with those ramifications, and we'll have to, to uh, replace that building. But the roof stabilization assistance helps us help the, the property owners to actually stabilize the roofs, maintain those buildings so we can get those infill with productive businesses as well as uh, upper story living, which kind of rolls into the third one there, upper story residential grants. We incentivize that. We help people to create those living environments in the downtown area. New business grants. A lot of people didn't even know we did that. We give grants out for new businesses, startups within the city. And we celebrate that now. We're trying to promote that so people are aware of what we do. And then uh, facade beautification grants. Uh, people who make improvements to the outside of their, their, their buildings, their facade, beautifying uh, our community. We, we uh, incentivize that as well through grants. But you have that in front of you. There's a form out there you can take a peek at. A lot of our programs are concentrated in the downtown area, but we're trying to expand upon that as well, making sure that all the buildings and all the, the uh, businesses in the, in the community have an opportunity to uh, uh, grow, uh, to expand, and locate here, of course. Celebrations, we talked about that just a little bit briefly, but the uh, ribbon cuttings, as Catherine said, uh, in fact, she's right there, right, right on the top one there. So that is a, a celebration for ribbon cuttings. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do when I first got here was to go to all the chamber ribbon cuttings. I even made that comment at, at one of the board meetings, you'll see us. Uh, I went to like one or two, and then they never saw us. As we get so busy, as you all know, you get so busy doing things and you, you can't get out from behind your desk, but one of the uh, intentional things for this new business development special, specialist is to make sure we're present. The city is present at those ribbon cuttings. Those are so important to us. When you have these uh, monumental things occur in the city, we want to be, be there to celebrate with you. Uh, certificate of occupancy permit celebrations. Some people don't even know what, that, uh, what a, uh, a certificate of occupancy is. Basically what that is, is that's when you are blessed, you have uh, approval from the city to occupy that building, that business, to open up those doors for business. And we would issue them all the time, but nobody would know they were occurring. We wanted to celebrate that. So Chief Kyle from the fire department uh, came up with this, it was his idea to celebrate those. And uh, Catherine was gonna set those up for him, but he didn't wanna wait. He was so excited about it, he said, let's just do it now. Let's go, let's go. So he was action-oriented, came up with a good solution, getting out there and celebrating those. So we actually uh, issued these uh, permits, these businesses are opening, we're there to celebrate. And actually it's great because we get to talk to the, uh, uh, the owners of the business, as well as the contractors that work on the business, the, the developers and designers of the business, and get their feedback and get their testimonials about their experiences working with the city. Uh, groundbreakings, again, we're there to celebrate those as well. And then, uh, as, as we mentioned before, we have some photos of the check presentations. So whenever we do uh, support for our outside, what we call outside agencies, money that we give to agencies that we work with on a regular basis, such as the, uh, the Carson Center, uh, we want to make sure we celebrate that. Make sure people realize that we are uh, endorsing, promoting, and sponsoring these, these organizations. Uh, any of those grants that we give out, make sure we get, give the, the check celebrations. So make sure that we bring uh, visibility to that business and also bring visibility to what we're doing to support them. We couldn't do it alone. We have multiple partners. Uh, we, of course, uh, uh, highlight a few here on the board. Uh, Paducah uh, Homegrown Farmers Market. Has anybody ever gone to the farmers market? All right. Did you know that the farmers market is a great incubator for businesses. A lot of the businesses that we have, our, our small businesses, actually came from basically uh, as an incubator at the farmer's market and has grown into brick and mortar. So that's been a wonderful economic development tool for the city. 
It's a great place to go shop. It supports those businesses who are trying out new products and new services, and they grow into brick and mortar businesses within the city. Of course, we have uh, Greater Paducah Economic Development, or GPED. We talked about them already. We partner with them on a lot of our uh, uh, larger industrial companies, as well as trying to excite people, incentivize people to locate into Paducah. We just partner with them on, uh, you've probably seen the, uh, the release with uh, um, oh. Dippin' Dots, thank you. I was almost called it Baskin Robbins, that'd be <laughs> bad, right? Uh, Dippin' Dots, we partner with them on Dippin' Dots expansion, we're really excited about that. Uh, the uh, Paducah Area Chamber of Commerce, where we're here today, is a great partner for the city. Yeah, we have one of the best, well, probably the best chamber in, in the, uh, the nation. They have a great reputation throughout the nation. It's a wonderful, powerful partner. They provide many, multiple great programs, such as this one this morning. Uh, Murray State University and also uh, Western Kentucky Community Technical College, or WikiTiki, if you will, partner with those great agencies on their economic development and their wonderful uh, programs they offer. In fact, we're trying to expand upon those to dive into more internships, utilizing what they're bringing out and keeping that local talent here local, show them what we have to offer at the city and the positions that we have available in the city, and try to keep them from moving on to come back and locate uh, their family they choose to live here in the best city in the world. And of course, uh, Sprocket, a place to create. We've been partnering with Sprocket now for two years and helping them to uh, continue to grow out at the Coke plant and for them to, to uh, enhance our ability to uh, uh, grow entrepreneurship. And just really excited about their partnership soon to be coming out with, with uh, Codify. <coughs> but most importantly, you. You are our biggest partners. You know, the customers that we have, the, the businesses that we have, the residents that we have, uh, those who come through town are our biggest partners to help us be successful. And with that, we'll turn it over to you guys for questions. You guys can all come up. Oh, we're just so good, there's no questions. Just yeah? an update on the bike lanes and walking, like walkability and bikeability of our city. Can you have an update on yes. That? Yeah, uh, really a great question. As you see, the um, uh, the state has really kind of uh, helped us out with that, gave us a nice chunk out there on the double diamond interchange where they put the uh, new sidewalks in. So now you can go from, once they're completed, they're still under construction, but, but now you'll be able to go, when we have visitors come to town and stay at the, on the hotels or by McDonald's, you can actually get walk all the way up or take a bike or run, if you will, all the way up uh, past the mall, which would be nice. And then we're working, of course, uh, we have money uh, set aside in the budget uh, for the creation, not just repair, but the creation of new sidewalks to go into our, our community this year. Uh, we've been, we've had money in the past for uh, repair and replacement, but now we're actually looking for new installation of sidewalks to increase the walkability. And then of course, uh, bike lanes. Uh, we're gonna be seeing some more bike lanes as well. Uh, the state's working on a program on, uh, I'm gonna get the road wrong, uh, 28th Street. Uh, coming from uh, Park all the way over to Jackson. It's gonna have uh, uh, bike lanes on both sides. So we're, we're really working on trying to expand that. Uh, the Greenway Trail Phase 4 is actually almost near completion. I don't know if you guys have seen that construction along the, rivers, the riverfront there. So that is uh, the boardwalk uh, sidewalk that starts basically over by the, uh, uh, where the flood wall turns. And then you'll take that all the way past the uh, the showroom convention center. There, it's going to uh, turn into striping through the convention center parking lot, and then it'll expand all the way over to new trail that was put in uh, by uh, Campbell Street. And then, of course, you go up Campbell, and then take the uh, Greenway all the way out to uh, the. Uh, I always get get those confused. The Greenway Apartments, Greenway Village Apartments. So, really expanding what we have. Uh, and then also you'll see uh, some, some more new sidewalks and interconnectivity. Uh, we're working actually just completing the process on North, North 6th Street, and then we're jumping to 9th Street and 10th Street. So working hard on that, making sure it's uh, uh, very uh, vigilant and getting those done and to continue to add. Uh, right now we're actually working with uh, applying for a grant through the state uh, hopefully we'll find we'll get it submitted uh, this week or next week. They say it'll be a 30-day turnaround to bring in $650,000 for new sidewalks. We're looking to connect uh, 25th Street from the uh, uh, the new innovation uh, hub that's being built there, particular Tillman, all the way out into the neighborhoods past Brick Stadium. So, so we're, we're we're working on it. 
that. We are definitely working on it. Yes. Yes, that is um, alternating between our um, leadership team meetings. So those would be, the next one would be on the 28th. So you're looking at um, every two weeks after that. Okay. Yep. And then um, if they begin at one, is there a typical end time for them? Or is it just they are typically 30 minutes, but they could last as long as an hour, just depending on what the project is. We kind of like to talk to you and, and get an idea of what it is, and then we kind of decide how long we might need for that. Uh, typically, it is um, a group of people. It's all city staff, so internally, but you have representatives from um, um, our planning department, engineering, public works department, and fire prevention, and also myself. Um, if you have, um, if you're going to offer alcoholic beverages, we talk about that as well. Um, but we like to have contractors, uh, developers, owners, architects, anyone in your group that you want to bring with you is more than welcome to be there. So um, it is about um, seven people usually on our side, and then however many people you want to bring for your project. Okay, and if I were to schedule a meeting and you were to schedule me, would we be at the same one, or would my um, meeting be separate from someone? Yours is always separate from someone else's. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The TIF is moving along well. We actually have, uh, we're scheduled to go to KETFA for their uh, approval at the end of this month. Uh, they are going to issue a preliminary approval, we hope. We th I, I imagine they will. Uh, and then once we get preliminary approval, we can start working with the uh, uh, selected developers to, to uh, pursue their developments. Uh, one thing, a few of the things that we're looking at right now are the uh, uh, Kresge building uh, lot, uh, generating interest in the, in the redevelopment of that lot, and then the redevelopment of the uh, downtown parking lot, which we refer to as city block, and then uh, potentially some other smaller uh, developments with some, uh, uh, I guess you'd call it, uh, what's the what word I'm looking for for the hotel? The uh, boutique hotels, that type of thing. So we're really work, working on trying to uh, take uh, what we have, keep those dollars that we're now going to Frankfurt, and actually turn those around and keep them local. So we can utilize those tax monies locally to help with the uh, development of our downtown and uh, infill those buildings that are empty now, and then also uh, uh, potentially build up some of our infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, plans in place to continue to do uh, uh, riverside uh, improvements, riverfront improvements. Uh, one thing that came up in a, in a engagement with the propeller club yesterday was the need to do some improvements to uh, uh, Water Street there uh, over by the uh, the flood wall and uh, I asked when the last time that was improved. Does anybody in here realize the last time that was improved? No, they didn't either. They said they've been here for like three decades and it's never been done. So I thought, well, that's, we need to do something with that. So some of the bricks are sinking, that type of thing. So that would be a, an investment there to make sure we keep that charm though and do it right. So. But we're making progress with the TIF. Hopefully we'll have preliminary approval at the end of this month. And then uh, soon thereafter, we'll find, they'll send down a, uh, a, a team, if you will, to audit our plans. Uh, then they'll tell us how much money they'll allow us to have from the state to get those plans accomplished. On the new business grants, is that only available for a new business starting or for a business moving, existing business moving into the target area? Uh, the, the, the new business grants really in, in incentivize businesses that don't exist already. So basically what we're trying to do is, is uh, help businesses get established and promote them. But uh, we're willing to talk, you know, so if you have something in mind, you're looking for some type of incentive, that one might not fit, but there might be something else we can do. That'd be a great thing to talk about during the, the kickstart meeting, yeah. 
in fact, when, when she was talking about this, the Kickstart meetings, there's, uh, uh, we have a uh, developer that works hand in hand with the city right now for some residential development, and I'm thinking he would really be more you know, beneficial for him to go to those Kickstart meetings when he, each time he does a project, because what he's typically used to doing is he contacts the city manager's office, he contacts engineering, he contacts planning, uh, you know, all three constantly, and he could just funnel right through that, right through that champion, and that, that would save him time, and he would get a better uh, answer. So next time he calls, which will probably be today, I'm going to refer him to uh, Lizzie. I thought that was a good idea. So. All right. Well, so the, the witching hour is upon us. Uh, Thank you very much, guys. We appreciate you. We'll, we'll stick around at the end. For <laughs>